Bibles, be so kind and turn with me to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Coming from a NLT version, but whatever translation you have, please be so kind and follow along. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, starting at verse number 7, and conclude at verse number 9. And the word of God reads as follows. Even though I have received such wonderful revelations from God, so to keep me from becoming proud. Oh, I was given a thorn in my flesh. A messenger from Satan to torment me and to keep me from becoming proud. Verse number eight. And three different times I begged the Lord to take it away from me. Verse number nine. But each time he said to me, my grace, good God of mine, is sufficient. Or my grace is all you need. For my power works best in weakness. That's all I want. Second Corinthians chapter 12 verses 7 through 9. And if anybody asks what preached the old preacher man on this second Sunday in November, you tell him he came out of Second Corinthians chapter 12 verses 7 through 9. And for a topic, how about this? We all have a pricking problem. We all have a pricking problem. That's right. Pray with me. Can I be honest? I believe with all every fiber of my heart that I am saved. I believe through every fiber of my heart that I am saved, uh -huh. baptized, yeah. and filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm convinced that I am on my way to heaven. And so glad to be on my way to heaven. Somebody, somebody else paid attention in school. 
That's what Shakespeare said. Be true to thyself. Don't fool yourself. That's a bad thing. Good God Almighty, when you start lying to your own self. Don't go there. Don't go there. Yeah, you start convincing your own self of a, of a lie. Be true to thyself. Good God Almighty, because all of us might be looking good on this morning. Smelling good with just the right amount of cologne on. Yeah. Just the amount of uh, perfume on. Good God Almighty. You got your makeup done just right. Yeah, you ain't looking all powdery, looking like a clown. Good yeah. God Almighty. Yeah. You got your wig sitting just right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You got your yeah, you got your weave and your hair and your tracks ain't ain't showing. Y'all better talk to me. Yeah. Oh, you looking good right now. Even though you're looking good, I still know you got some pricking problems. Y'all gonna walk? Y'all gonna walk with me? Yeah. And just like I got some uh, 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 thorny issues, some pricking problems, you too got some also. And even good God Almighty, uh, if nobody knows about your thorny problems or your pricking problems, you know. You know the issue that you really deal with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of us know how to cover them up real good. Good God Almighty. Yeah, they know how to conceal. Yeah, yeah. Women know about that. You see, they, they put that face on. They put that concealer on first. Then they put the makeup on on top of that. And then blend it all in. But yeah, there's a lot of concealers. Even in the Lord's house that conceal their issues and their thorny issues. Y'all better talk to me. Yeah, you hear about it regularly. You struggle about it frequently. And you often ask yourself, why does this pain continue to linger around? Good God Almighty. Why does this problem keep pricking at me? I prayed about it. I cried about it. over it in the name of Jesus but yet it is still there I want to be delivered from it but I ain't delivered from it yet good God Almighty why is this freaking problem aggravating me and agitating me and the question is why does God allow this problem to remain in my life and in your life and before I tackle this text, I got to put this disclaimer on out there. Because church folk got to realize, good God Almighty, that breakthroughs in our Christian walk seldom happen when things are going peaches and cream in your life. I said breakthroughs seldomly happen when everything is okie dokie. But rather, God seems to choose dark times in our lives, dark moments in our lives, dark problems in our lives, dark difficulties in our lives, dark shortcomings in our lives, and pain and temptation and suffering that we experience. Why does he do that? To draw us closer to him. To draw us closer to a deeper relationship with him. To draw us into a more personable and intimate relationship with him. No wonder Paul said in, in Romans chapter 8 verse 28. All things work together for the good of those that love the Lord. And are called according to his purpose. So here it is today in our text. Paul starts off in verse number 7. Paul said, good God Almighty, after receiving all this heavenly revelation, good God Almighty, God had sent the messenger of Satan to, to bunker at me, to keep me humble. Some of y'all been lying on the devil, and I'm here to let you know. Every devil that comes into your life ain't always from the devil. It's right here in the text. Where it says God sent good God Almighty. He sent it to buffer at you. Come on now. Y'all 
y'all better, y'all better walk with me. Yeah. It's right there in the text. Yeah, man, what's the singular reason why Satan, y'all, was even cast out of, of heaven? It was because of pride. And yet, God used the very thing that got his butt kicked out of heaven to keep you kicked in in heaven. Good, good God Almighty. Yeah, that's why all things work together. He used the very thing that he lost his rights to be in heaven with, but yet he's going to use him to buffer at you so you can keep your eyes on the prize in heaven. Last thing anybody want to do is get caught up in pride. Last thing you want to do is get what's called an ego. Y'all know how to spell ego? E G O. And whenever somebody have an ego, literally what that means is you are trying to edge God out. Ego. You are so caught up in yourself and my ego is so big I'm trying to edge God out of the picture. Oh boy, good God. I'm, 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 I'm preaching better than y'all responding, but that's alright. I'll preach anyway. I think I will, Walker. I think I will. When God kicked good God of mine, the devil out of heaven, to be honest, he could have just he could have just banned him all together. He could have just destroyed the, the devil all together. But instead, God allowed the devil to hang around and roam around the earth to tempt man and woman of every arena in your life. And that's why the Bible calls the devil the prince of the air, according to the book of Ephesians. Good God Almighty. Yeah, he's the prince of this world. And I'm so glad that Paul said that he had a thorn in his flesh. But the Holy Spirit allowed it to be written and worded properly. And when the Holy Spirit allows the, the Bible to be silent, it is up to you and I not to try to add or to take away. Leave it just the way it is. Good God Almighty. Because the reason why Paul said, yeah, yeah, I got this thorn in my flesh, but didn't name the thorn. Because if man said, well, at least I ain't got no drinking problem. So long as I ain't got no drinking problem, I'm, I'm better than them. Oh, as long as I ain't got no eating problem, I'm, I'm better than them. As long as I don't have no jealous spirit, I'm better than them. No, no, no. A thorn is a thorn. And he left it for you to put your thorn in that spot. Good God Almighty, not for you to get puffed up and say, "Well, I don't, I don't, I don't smoke as much weed as I do." You know, such and such. You, yeah, no, 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 no. A thorn is a thorn. Y'all want to pray with me? Yeah. See, your thorn ain't my thorn. Your thorn, some folk might see it. My thorn, nobody might not never see it. But God still see two thorns going on. And so one thorn ain't got no business uh, uh, trying to downplay somebody else's thorn. Because God can still use you, still bless you, still anoint you, even with your struggles in your life. Boy, I preach that thing. Because I know too many folks have been discounted. I know too many folks that have shut their life out and think that God can't use them because they got a struggle. I know some folks who go buy the cheapest uh, liquor you can buy. Drink, buy y'all want? Uh, I don't even know they still make that Mad Dog Twenty Twenty. Boy, you, boy, you got five dollars. Boy, you get drunk as a skunk. Come on now, boy. I don't even know how I got home one time years ago when I was in the military. Huh? Messing around with an old school. Hey, good God, am I going to turn me on to some mad dog? I said, Lord, have mercy. 
but ain't nothing but poor. You right. I'm in the middle of the road just running like I'm at PT. It's on a Saturday day, but I thought I had, I was trying to get to work. But I was gone. I said, I ain't never touching that a day in my life. But my point is, there are some winos out there that can sing songs better than the best choir in all of America. There are some drunks out there that can quote the Bible better than the, the best preacher can. So you better not be, you better be careful how you downplay water, trying to uplift yourself. And thank God for his grace along the way. Your thorn could be a physical thorn. And your thorn could be an emotional thorn. Your thorn could be a mental thorn or a psychological thorn. I don't know what Paul's thorn was. I don't know what good God of mine, the thorn is that you or I may be dealing with. But what I do know is God's grace is sufficient with your pricking problems in your life. Maybe your thorn is unforgiveness. You have a hard time forgiving folks because someone hurt you many years ago. And ever since, you just got a hard time forgiving anybody. Maybe you got trust issues because somebody let you down. And now you look at everybody sideways. Can't trust nobody. That's your thorn that you got to deal with. Maybe your thorn is anger. Good God Almighty. Yeah, you look pleasant at church, but you raise more hell than a little bit when you get home. That might be your thorn. You got an anger issue. Yeah, maybe you are dealing with lust. Come on now. You're looking at every skirt tail that walk by. You're looking at the, yeah, you, you yeah, women, your eyes drop below. Yeah, yeah, when you see Billy D. Williams walk in the room. Maybe you're dealing with a lust issue. Yeah, it could be alcoholism that you struggle in day in and day out. You could be struggling with pornography, struggling with lottery, struggling with yeah, your thorn might be an unhappy marriage. Oh, boy, he pays the bills. Buddy, get on your lap, nerd. She cooked the best biscuits, but she's going to raise Satan. That might be the thorn that you got to work out, but know that God's grace is efficient through it all. Then you have the Pharisees and Sadducees. They get on their self-righteous. Well, all the all them examples of passages you, I don't fit none of them. I don't, I don't play lottery. I don't smoke weed. I don't drink no liquor. I ain't looking at no skirt tails no more. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But your thorn might be you keep going to dealers when you ain't got no money to pay your life bill. Your thorn might be you going to uh, to play lottery instead of paying your water bill. Your thorn is you can't stop eating. See, a fat person ain't got no business talking about no drug addict or no skinny person. See, a thorn is a thorn. And, and too many times folks have been condemned. Folks don't want to come to church. They don't feel accepted because they got hang-ups. They got issues. And instead of us embracing them and loving them and working with them, we want to we wanna cast them to the side. I pray that the dope boys come to church. I pray that the girls, after they get finished stripping on the pole, will come to church. I, I pray, good God Almighty, yeah, that the homemongers and the drug addicts and the, yeah, 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 yeah. Atheists, even Donald Trump is, 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 is welcome to come to church. If he's willing to humble himself in the mighty presence of the Lord. Everybody is welcome into the house of the Lord.
Sad part is, some people think they don't even have a thorn. And the sad part is, that's a thorn right there that you think that you don't have a thorn. <laughs> Man, I'm talking about from the front door to the back door. And everything in between the door. Everybody in here got a thorn that you are dealing with. And if you don't have one or don't think you have one, you better show enough, you better start praying to the Lord right now to reveal to you and to show you. Yeah, to open your eyes. Yeah, yeah. I think that was a it was a sermon in the in, in the old testament. He couldn't see what was going on. And yeah, 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 Elijah's servant. And good God of my Elijah prayed, Lord, open his eyes so he can see. And all of a sudden, he seen a host of angels right there ready to fight on his behalf. Don't tell me that God won't fight for you even when the, when the, when the deck is stacked up against you. The reason why many of you have made it this far is because God was fighting for you. When that man was beating you, when you was homeless, when you didn't have nothing, when you was working at a minimum wage job, and now you got a $20 hour job, that was God fighting for you. When you had a regular uh, uh, apartment, and all of a sudden now you got your own house, houses that you built, that was God fighting for you. Let me just say this. If God has been good to you, and if God has been extraordinary good to you, and been good in your life, then that alone will qualify you to have a thorn. Because Peter said, <laughs> now that you tasted that the Lord is good, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. First Peter chapter two verse three. Uh -huh. So you better remain humble, because if not, pride will set in and begin to get the GGs. And the last thing any of us want is to get the GGs. Somebody said, "What's the GGs?" When you start taking God's grace for granted. Come on now. That's the GG. Last thing you ever want to do is start taking God's grace for granted. Y'all heard that GG in there? See, God's G, grace G. Yeah, okay. All right, okay. <laughs> yeah, let me leave that alone. This, 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 this thorn that Paul was referring to in our text today derives from a Greek word. And it has two different definitions. The first thorn that Paul speaks about, he speaks about this splendor that goes into your flesh and it hooks. Y'all know about fishing, don't you? That, and that's what happened? That, that hook goes in the flesh, hook, and it snatch you. That's, that, that's one definition of a thorn. But the thorn that Paul was referring to was the thorn of a tent stake, which is normally anywhere from 18 inches to 24 inches long that uh, uh, is strong enough to withstand the wind. Because you know that wind be gushing out there in the, in the desert. That tent, because see, Paul was a tent maker. Yeah, yeah, so he, he utilized an illustration that related to his livelihood. And this, this tent, this, uh, 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 this tent stake, yeah, being 18 to 24 inches long, he felt like God was driving this stake inside of him with all his struggles from day in and day out. Too often folks wanted to always shine in their life. Folk love sunny days. But new edition said, can you stand there? Right? I'm going to preach that one day. Yeah. If you experience sunny days every day, you'll be dried out. 
And once you dry out, you die out. You need sun and rain to grow. Too often, folks want the sun without the rain. As soon as it starts raining in their life, they want to quit. They want to give up. They want to throw in the towel, which reveals that's your thorn. You a quitter. Y'all praying with me? Thorns are a blessing. Your thorn and my thorn it pokes at you and I. It reminds us every time of our inadequates, our in, in, imperfections. It reminds us of our shortcomings. But also the thorns are there to prick at you every time pride try to step in. Proverbs chapter 27 verse 21 says it this way. It says fire tests the purity of silver and gold. But a person is tested by the praises of others. When you are being tested, God is sitting back and saying, let me see who we're going to get a credit to. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I tried my best, I tried my best. No, you, you, you set yourself up for pride. You better say to God be the glory. Y'all praying with me? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Never get caught up with thinking that it's you who are doing it. It ain't about you. It ain't about us. It ain't about me. It's about all about him. And so God allows thorns in our life because even when folks try to compliment you, you can tell yourself, well, yeah, I, 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 to God be the glory, but he's still working on me. Yeah, yeah. Even if you don't tell them that. They know, they, first of all, your thorns ain't nobody else's business. But as long as you're communicating with the Lord and you're keeping yourself humble and saying, Lord, I'm depending on you, all is well. Some of you are begging the Lord to remove your mountains out the way. When you need to be asking the Lord, good God Almighty, to give you enough strength to climb the mountain. Good God Almighty. God don't want to get rid of the mountains. God want to get in the mountains with you and get involved in everything you do to teach you how to maintain, even through your struggles, to keep you humble all at the same time. Y'all praying with me? I don't know about you, but I have some freaking problems. And as I get ready to go to my seat, tell you three, three quick points, and then I'll get on out your way. But what I like about it, before I get to my three points, that even Jesus had a pricking problem. So if Jesus had to deal with something, you know you and I are going to have to deal with some stuff. Point number one. The first point is your pricking problem produces protection. Did you, you better tell amen. Tell the Lord thank you that God is protecting you from something in your life by keeping you on your knees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you if you had it all together, you would start relying on your strength instead of his strength. And the Bible says pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Thank God, good God Almighty, yeah, for his protection. So master protect us. And thank you for the pain that's in my life. Thank you for the problems in my life to keep a hedge of protection around me, Lord. See, the Lord knows our vulnerabilities. He knows our weaknesses. Thus, by his grace, good God Almighty, 
that thorn is there to protect you. Number two, after you realize you got some protection in your life, then you got to also realize that a thorn in your life will propel you to start praying. I have found oftentimes when I get lax and lazy and I'm going to let you know you know these, these super holy preachers that you know put on this facade like they just you know just you know they just live in the clouds and you know take baths in holy water every night they lying to you because the Bible, yeah, there's a smoke screen. Because the Bible said we are flesh and spirit. You know, even though I preach the gospel, I'm still a normal human being. Y'all praying with me? I realize every once in a while, in my lazy moments, in my lax moments, when I don't commune with the Lord like I should, and when I don't be praying like I should because life got a way of getting you busy from time to time. You get pulled to the left and pulled to the right and you just come home, you throw something down your neck, you take this quick shower and you go on to bed. You're so tired, you meant to pray. And you wake up, Lord, I'm sorry. I didn't even pray. I didn't even talk to you last night. But when things get lax in my that's when I find uh, that, that, that things are a little strange between me and my Heavenly Father. But something about them pricking problems. Good God Almighty. They always make you fall to your knees. And the Bible says Paul prayed three times. Not one time. Not two times. But Paul paid, prayed three times to have these problems removed from him. Good God Almighty. He prayed and he prayed and he prayed. And even though he prayed. He still had to deal with these thorns. Good God Almighty. Because, see, when you pray, you either going to pray that the Lord will hear your prayer or deliver you from that thing or set you free or you will hear the Lord's voice speak to you and give you peace about that situation. But you got to pray until you get some form of an answer. Oh, I know I'm right because even Jesus prayed. In the garden got sent in me. Father, if it's, yeah, 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 if it's possible, let this cup pass. But nevertheless, not my will. But let your will be done. And sure enough, it didn't pass. And he still had to go to the cross. And thank God he had to go to the cross. And so when you have prayed and sincerely prayed, and prayed and prayed about the issue and yet the Lord would not remove that from your life you got to understand that now I got to rely on God's grace to make it through I cannot be paralyzed from my shortcomings but work through my shortcomings through God's grace stop condemning family members and friends and co-workers because they love the Lord they go to church every day every once in a while you hear them say a cuss word and all of a sudden you want to send them to hell that might be a struggle that they're dealing with when they might have came from the military and anybody know about the military boy they cuss like a sailor in the military ain't that right bro chairman yeah 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 he a marine yeah you know from the drill sergeant to a tomb sergeant yeah. <laughs> Point number three. After you realize that that thorn is there to protect you. After you realize that that thorn is to keep you prayed up. Then lastly, number three, you got to realize it produces power in your life. What is it that God wants to do in your life and my life more than anything? That is empower us, empower our life, but not until we come to the end of our road and start using his strength and not your own strength. That's why the strongest people that you will ever meet are folks who have come to the end of themselves and said, I know I can't do it without you, Lord. And even though I might have a shortcoming, I'm going to still trust in you. They realize 
realize that, yeah, yeah, this thorn is there to empower me because he said my grace is sufficient and it works the best in your weakness. So when I am weak, God Almighty is strong. Let the Lord be strong in your life today. Let the Lord move in your life today. Let the Lord speak to you in your life today. Let the Lord speak through you in your life today because he's there to empower you. All I want to say, Jesus himself knew about the pricking problem. Even Jesus didn't get pricked with one thorn or pricked with two thorns. But he got pricked with a whole crown of thorns that was placed on his head. He was mocked and beaten. Yeah, spit on. Pulled hair out of his beard. And yet, with the blood still flowing from his body, took up a whole rugged cross. Went to a hill called Mount Calvary. Yeah, and went there and died for your sins. When dad died for my sins. And I'm so glad that my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, died for our sins. But the story didn't stop right there. They took him down and put him in a barn man's tomb. He stayed there all day from. Stayed there all day said. Stayed there all day said. But somebody said, Riley, Sunday morning. He got up with the old power. Power to make you walk right. Power to make you talk right. Healing power. Saving power. Delivering power. Glory power. Any kind of power you need, oh, you can find it in Christ Jesus. Say yeah. Say yeah. Oh, I'm through with that thing. I'm so glad. That God's grace is sufficient. So I, it's more than sufficient. So I think I'll keep on running on and see what the end is going to bring. All over the bill, let us stand.
we offer you Jesus today. Somehow your thorns or your shortcomings have got in the way of your progress with the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just know that you have fell in the trap of the enemy. And that's what he want to do is keep you paralyzed and believe in a lie. But the truth is his grace is sufficient. For the Bible says we're seeing the power abounds even more. Secondly, if there's anyone that already knows the Lord, but you're out of relationship with the Lord, out of fellowship with the Lord, and you want to reconnect, recommit, reestablish, repeat what you once had, Church doors is open for you as well. Amen.